I say remix. What's going on, people? Welcome to United View and welcome to the preview, the match preview for England versus Iran. And as you can see, yeah, it's not fake. I'm actually here. It's windy as well. I'm here in Qatar, as you guys know already. I'm here at the Adidas headquarters here um, on campus. And you know what? It's absolutely astounding views as well. I have to say that um, impossible is nothing. I can see it to the left of me as well. And this is where a lot of the Adidas players will come, do integrations. Uh, I think Ika Casillas has been here, Diego Forlan, Lionel Messi's boots have been delivered to this very building, um, ready for his games um, in the World Cup as well. But this is England versus um, Iran. And as you can see, the Khalifa Stadium behind me, I'm pumped. Uh, I, it's got to the stage now where I just want to see England play. All of the build up to it. Um, who's going to start? Who's not going to start? Who should start? What formation? Are we going to be defensive, etc., etc.? But obviously, this is a Manchester United channel. This is United View. Yes, the whole football world is stopping and, you know, there's, there's a lot going on internationally, but we're always going to try and link back to Manchester United wherever we can, especially when there are Man United players involved in the games that I'm going to be covering out here, which is in an awful lot. Today, obviously, we're doing England versus Iran. So let's talk about Marcus Rashford. Let's talk about Luke Shaw and let's talk about Harry Maguire. They're the three Manchester United players who are in the England squad. Um, We'll get to Rashford last because I think that's an interesting one. Let's talk with the, with the mainstays. We know Harry Maguire is going to play for England. We know Harry Maguire is going to start for England. We know that Gareth Southgate believes that Harry Maguire is the best centre-back at Manchester United. We technically know that Gareth Southgate thinks that Harry Maguire is the best centre-back in England, for England, which is why he's played an ever-present role for him. You know what? I'm actually going to separate out. Um, the two Maguires, because I think there's two Maguires. You've got your Man United Maguire and you've literally got your England Maguire. And let's be honest, guys, as much as, you know, he's had a bad time at Manchester United, as much as we may feel, and, and I say we, I can't speak for everyone. Many Man United fans feel that he's not been the right guy for us to lead us and he's not been the right guy um, at centre-back over Varane or over even Lindelof with Martinez. For England, he's been absolutely fine. And I don't actually have a problem with Harry Maguire being in this English squad. I know a lot of people have said it's a disgrace and form and stuff like that. He hasn't even been playing for Manchester United, so how on earth can he be playing for England? But I actually look at it the other way around. I think we forget sometimes how important it is to build uh, a functioning team within a short space of time at major tournaments. And if you look at the track record for England's major tournaments in the last two in the Euros and the World Cup, right, we got to the semi-finals of the World Cup, we got to the set, uh, the final of the Euros. Hopefully that mic cover doesn't just blow off. Oh, actually off the top. Um, and I can see why, why Gareth Southgate trusts him. Look, do I agree that Harry Maguire is as good as Southgate thinks he is? No, I don't. But England have been successful with him playing there. Okay, the flip side to that be, what would it look like with Ben White playing with, with John Stones? What would it look like if Tamori was in the squad? What would it look like if Mings was there? What would it look like with Conor Cody? All these different types of players. But me, as an England fan, when I'm coming away from Manchester United, I don't think that it's going to be a problem Harry Maguire being there. And, and on Harry Maguire, if I think about it, I think this is where he doesn't feel the pressure. This is where he feels at home. This is where he feels a million dollars. This is where he puffs his chest out, has his back strong, and kind of has that little bit of arrogance about him because he's got complete backing from the manager. His performances are spoken for themselves in context of England. Um, and I think that confidence shines through when he plays for England as well. So on Harry Maguire, I don't have any problems there. And now it's switching to England. I want Harry Maguire to perform well. I don't want him to be making mistakes and being too slow on the ball and getting skinned high up the pitch and people running in behind him and him not performing well. Because if that does happen, then Gareth Southgate's got a big decision to make and they're probably going to have to change it. Um, so in the, good, in, the, in, the, in the fairness of England, because I want England to win the, the, the World Cup, obviously, I want Harry Maguire to do well. It was the same when he's playing for Man United, I want him to do well. I just can see what's happening there and we've got better players in that position. But for England, he's absolutely fine. So no, no question marks there. Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw, I mean, how does he, how does Luke manage to do this? It's like every time he's challenged or he's thrown with a new hurdle to get over or a new challenge, he kind of rises to it where he shows this kind of mentality where he can keep going, this mentality where he can overcome not playing well or being a little bit flat and playing within himself and just raise it to another level. Again, if we go back to the last tournament, which was the Euros last year, um, sorry, the year before, um, Luke Shaw was absolutely fantastic. Arguably one of England's best players, if not the, scored in the final. And he had that 
really good Euros off the back of a fantastic Premier League season where Alex Tellers was brought in. And again, he, he, he leveled up. Luke Shaw, to me, looks in, in some of the best shape I've seen him in for a long time. He looks really fit. He looks powerful. He looks strong. Um, and from a Man United perspective, he lost his place to Terrell Malassia and we know that he won it back and had actually been really assured, excuse the pun, um, by, doing, by, by playing well in them games where he came back in. And I think he transfers that into England. Um, yes, with Ben Chilwell not being there, he's an automatic starter. I don't see Chilwell. I don't see um, what's this? I don't. I don't see Kieran Tripps uh, coming coming across to to left back at all. I think he starts at right back. And Luke Shaw's left back spot is it's his. It's he's nailed on to have it. And I'm expecting another big tournament from him as well. Um, it can only do him more, you know, more confidence for us as Manchester United fans to see him be away on international duty and we're going to be rooting for him, wanting him to do well on a personal as well. And if you're not English, that's going to be your main motivating factor. And if you are English, obviously you want him to do well for both. And you support Man United, you want him to do well for both teams, um, club and country. But I think Luke Shaw is one of them players that you know he's defensively sound. You know he's got it in him to defend properly. He's always quite steady with that. He's got a good touch on the ball. He's composed on the ball. The only criticisms or not even criticisms, kind of like the frustrations I have with Luke is that obviously I've watched him his whole career and it feels like it, there's always feels like there's another gear to go. You know what's in there. I feel like I'm going to blow away. You know what's in there and you know what he can what he can offer if he plays at his maximum. It's just how much do we get that maximum? Like when he picks up the ball and drives of it and cut, comes inside and comes in field. He looks powerful. He almost looks not unstoppable, but he looks like he's he's someone to be reckoned with. He's also got a decent a decent left foot where he can play balls in behind. He can hit he can hit crosses. And but those things, it's not that he can't do them things. It's the frustration is that we want him to do it even more, which is what he done for England in the Euros and in, in last time out. So I'm expecting a big one from from Luke Shaw. I think he can he can do well. Um, and and it's his place to lose really because he, I think he's going to be the starting left back throughout the whole thing. Um, Marcus Rashford, this is the interesting one. Marcus, obviously, look, he's had such a tough time last year, way away from the England squad. And you know what? If this if this tournament would have come in in the summer, um, Marcus would never have been there. He would have been in big big trouble off the back of the season that he had. Um, it's testament to himself. It's testament to Eric Ten Hag. Um, and the progress that he's got out of Marcus Rashford, which hasn't been perfect, by the way, you know, but it's just been a lot better than last year to get himself back into the fray for England. Wow. It is super, super windy up here. Um, I don't know if you lot are hearing that. It literally feels like we're about to blow away, um, but I'm still here. Um, things drop around everywhere. Um, but yeah, on Marcus Rashford, he's done well to get himself back into the fray. Now, he's not, he's not going to be starting for England. I think he's, he's, he's way off that. I think he's way off starting for England, but... He's going to be an impact player off the bench. You know, I don't think Grealish is going to start for England as well. So that's another string to Gareth Southgate's bow, another threat coming off the bench. And for Marcus Rashford, I think it was just about having that belief just to even be here. And I'm not saying that Marcus Rashford should be a token gesture in terms of just being here to make up the numbers. But in terms of for him and what it will mean to be around international camp and for him to be around the boys and, and hopefully, you know, come off the bench and make some appearances, that's again going to just continue his, his road back to where Marcus Rashford can be. Um, and I think he knows that as well. Think about it. When, he, when Marcus Rashford was, was injured and he delayed his shoulder operation, it's because he wanted to go to the Euros, because he got picked. He loves being around the England squad. England means everything to him. And actually, if that helps him to to keep training harder, to keep going up and to keep validating himself with the hard work he's been doing to get a place in the England squad, it can only be a good thing for England. And of course, for us as Manchester United fans, it can only be a good thing. So yeah, he's definitely not going to start games. I can't see that unless we win the first two games comfortably and we're pretty much secured, um, you know, qualification comfortably. And then he might, Gareth Southgate may change it um, in the third game. Or you, you never know, he might just change it in one of the games if he comes off the bench in the second game against uh, USA, I think it is. Is it USA second game? I think it is. Um, then, then he, he might come in, but I think for now, I don't think he'll be starting, but Marcus will just be happy to be here and we'll just get his head down and work hard. So I'm just glad he's won his place back. And obviously we've seen with Jaden Sancho as well, not being in his England squad, taking the time off social media to focus on his family and stuff like that. Again, he'll be looking at this thinking, how can he get back into the England fray? Um, and just focus on his Manchester United stuff as well. So it's good to hear that Jaden Sancho is taking some time out as well. And I hope he's going to be fine. Um, and to finish off. Um, my predicted lineup, I'm going to go with um, Ramsdale, not Ramsdale on goal, <laughs> excuse me, Pickford. I'm going to go with uh, Kieran Trippier, which I don't mind Pickford. I know a lot of people saying play Ramsdale, but I don't mind Tri Pickford in there. I'm going to go with Kieran Trippier right back, Stones, Maguire, Shaw. I'm going to go Bellingham, Rice as the two holding midfielders. Me personally, I'm going Foden in the 10. And then up front, I know he gets a lot of flack and he's not been playing very well, but at England level, 
he's absolutely fantastic and he's my guy Jamaican and all that even though he's English so I never have any um I'm a little bit biased towards Raheem Sterling, I'll be honest. But even if I take the bias away, I just think his stats speak for itself and his impact at England level, it speaks for itself. This time, before we was going into, uh, a couple of years ago, before going into the Euros, everyone was saying, don't start, uh, don't start Sterling, he's been rubbish, Grealish is better. Sterling literally carried us through the group. So I'm going Sterling, up front obviously has to be Harry Kane, and on the right, it obviously has to be Bukayo Saka, who I'm expecting a big, big tournament from as well. Smash the like on the video, guys, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. And again, I just want to say a big, Big thank you to you guys for supporting the channel. We're here um, in Qatar because of you guys, because you guys have supported the channel and supported the journey. So make sure you check out all the videos that we've got coming up for you guys as well. And more importantly, there's gonna be loads of match views. Every match view is gonna be covered for the England game from the studio. So there's gonna be guys down there. Uh, there's gonna be um, fan views as well straight after that. And Owen is gonna be doing other uh, match views as well. Um, whether it's Brazil, whether it's Argentina, whether it's Spain, whether it's Germany, whether it's Portugal, whether it's whoever, he's going to be doing a hell of a lot as well. So there's so much content coming for you guys. So drop a like on the video and let me know what your predictions are for the England uh, versus Iran game behind me in the Khalifa Stadium. I am out of here, guys. Take care. Peace.